Hey, very good evening in India. Good morning, America. This is Sean Shankaran from Indian Overseas Congress, and I have Sam Petroda with me. Today we have a very important topic to discuss: the idea of uh, future democracy in the ambits of Congress 2024 Manifesto Nyaya Patra. I'll let Sam give a quick good introduction about the 48-page blueprint of the future of India. Which I think a lot of minds have put together from the Congress world, but I think it was done by one man who have walked across the country from south to north, east to west, walking thousands of kilometers, listening to so many voices. He listened to the entire Bharat ki awaaz, and his thoughts are the one we our team have put together. And I let Sam give an introduction. I think uh, there are a great amount of team. I think Sam will talk about that, uh, the work went behind it. But thank you, Sean. Greetings, everyone from Chicago. As part of our conversation on the book on the idea of democracy, Sean and some of the young people felt it will be good to talk today about Congress Party manifesto. This manifesto is a result of a lot of discussion at various levels. A lot of input, like Sean said, collected during Rahul Gandhi's yatras, listening to people, discussing with them, and looking at the overall mood of the nation. The manifesto committee under the leadership of Mr. P.C. Chidambaram worked very hard. I had a couple of conversations with him and I must compliment not only Mr. Chidambaram and his team, but also Congress party and the leadership for putting together a very interesting manifesto. I remember in Rajiv Gandhi's time when we were doing manifesto in 1989, Rajiv Gandhi had set up two parallel teams. One, a public team, which was headed by Narsiyan Rao, Pranam Mukherjee, Arjun Singh and others. And another one, a team in the background, which consisted of P. Krishnamurti, General Krishna Rao, Ambassador Ras Gotra, and me. We used to meet regularly at my house and look at the key issues from one perspective, and the political team looked at key issues from different perspective, and then we merged these two together. Similarly, I'm sure Mr. Chidambaram had to speak to a large number of people in his team to get consensus on many of these complex ideas. A document like this is not very easy to put together. I am very proud of this document. I'm very proud of it, mainly because I personally believe this essentially outlines the challenge India is facing. And different people read this document differently. And that's the reason for this broader conversation. And I'm sure we all find things of our interest and things probably don't interest some people. I see in this document macro level issues and also micro level issues. I see in this document philosophy, strategy, values, and I see in this document also a path forward for the future of India. 
when I look at the outline, to me, first set of items are mainly for the interest groups like farmers, students, youth, women, uh, OBC, minorities and all that. And the second set of items are really to put things in place to deliver on those. The emphasis on putting democracy back on track. Focusing on our constitutional values is extremely important to me as an individual. Without that, you can't really deliver on many of these issues. Then similarly, we talk about economy, again at a macro level. And all of these things come together in a very nice way. The core of this is connected in two basic ideas, sustainability and inclusion. If we don't provide right platform, democracy, rule of law, uh, security, safety, uh, employment, uh, economic prosperity, we can't deliver. So sustainability is tied to all of these ideas that to sustain our path, we need to stick to our values, we need to stick to our constitution, we need to really focus on democracy, and then inclusion. Large number of people have been left behind because of inequality, especially income inequality. We need to lift them. To lift them, there are certain sacrifices we need to make as a nation. And that's where the details fall in place. The reaction from opposition has been very sort of weird in some ways from my perspective. Some people call this, and I'm just referring to reading media uh, articles, comments on social media and all, and I don't do much of that, but from whatever little I have scanned through, some people think it is too leftist. In fact, one friend of mine said, this manifesto looks like it is written in Russia. It shows their lack of understanding of the reality of poor people of India. But they are entitled to their view. And I think we need to talk to them and explain to them what it really means to large number of poor people who are at the bottom of the economic pyramid. Manifesto cannot be just about tax benefits. And I was surprised to learn that this manifesto is really created waves in many ways because it addresses the issues of large number of people. So I saw on social media some old comment I had made five years ago as my comment to the present manifesto. That shows me how effective this manifesto is. That people want to lie to defend their viewpoint. But that's normal. 
I am personally very proud of this manifesto. I compliment Congress President Rahul Gandhi, PC Chidamram, and the whole team of people who worked on it. Nothing is perfect in life. So you can always find some faults here and there, which is fine. But if you take 80-90% of this at the core, I think it is need of the hour. To me, need of the hour is to fix the democracy, focus on our constitution, revive economy, employment, focus on growth, and then make sure that the people who have been left behind are given priority, support, helping hand, and encouragement to build their future. With this, I want to hear your comments. It will be good to take one by one issues and talk a little more in detail. Uh, but I leave it to all of you because you are the people who are going to be reading it in your own different way. And we want to learn from you. We want your input, your advice. And I'm sure Mr. Chidambaram and Rahul Gandhi and Karge and others would be very interested in listening to your views or at least filtering your views and getting a summary. Thank you, Sean. Awesome, Sam. Uh, looking forward to talk to P. Chidambaram also in one of this uh, show. Let us see if we can get him on the loop. I think it is a phenomenal. If he's available, I'm sure he'll be open to conversation. But, you know, right now, everybody's so busy with elections. So their time is more precious. Sure. And I leave that to PC, but I'll call him. He has been a good sure. friend, sure. very supportive, sure. excellent person and a good communicator. Great, great, sir. So I think they have done a very, very great job. So I think uh, Rahul on the roads of Nyaya Yatra already touched upon Hisedari, Equity Justice, Yuvanaya, uh, Youth Justice, Narinaya, Women Justice, Kisanaya, Farmer Justice, and Workers uh, Justice. Maybe he touched upon 25 important assurances out of this five. But I think that is some other very, very important topic, a uh, jewel of this uh, manifesto, which is, I think I see a section called the uh, section shits right after following this five sections, which is called defending the constitution. And in the sixth section, there are very important another six topics out of which 57 assurances are there. Defending the constitution, reversing the damages, media, judiciary, anti-corruption, art, culture, and heritage. Phenomenal 57 important assurances for the country which may be the blueprint so even though the, all the other five important nyaya is kind of uh, being taken to the grassroots of the world, I think this is certainly to assure the people of the country that uh, they, they don't need to fear and many other things. I just want, in fact, to read, uh, uh, maybe to, to take an entire session today to dive deep because this is a very important session I found uh, where Congress is reassuring the country and people that uh, we will get back our democracy. Uh, focusing on the multiple different pillars of democracy, which is uh, also about your book, the idea of democracy. So, I, uh, if you are okay, I, I, uh, we can take uh, one one section after uh, another in this uh, sixth chapter. Uh, Sam. Sure, I think, like you said, the sixth chapter and the chapter on economy is more about the platforms. Without democracy, without rule of law, without worrying about justice, a lot of these things are difficult to deliver. And that's the point. If you want economy to grow the way we expect, we need democracy. There is a great equation between authoritarian system and democratic system when it comes to capitalism. Of course, China has shown it differently, but Chinese system works because their labor laws and all are not as open, as flexible, 
designed to benefit workers and we are part of an international community in many of these issues. So for us, it will be very difficult. And that's why democracy has to be the bedrock of our future. Awesome, sir. So in the saving democracy, you have also added a couple of words, removing fear, restoring freedom. And I, I want to, in fact, read the uh, couple of sentences as the uh, kind of the preface for that entire, uh, maybe we have got uh, 18 promises under that, which is the largest one in this uh, whole sixth chapter. India's democracy has been reduced to an empty shell. Every institution, including parliament, is perceived to have lost its independence and become subservient to the executive government. This common knowledge that it is the will of one person that prevails in the country, people's trust in democratic institution will be restored. Do you have any comment about this introduction, sir? No, I think that's, a, I agree with that. And uh, that's the whole idea of creating a bright platform for it. Okay. Without that kind of commitment to democracy, it will be difficult to move forward. We want independent institutions, whether it is judiciary, ED, income tax office, election commission, police, security. And ultimately, we want to decentralize things. So there is a very nice conversation in the manifesto on central state into things. Okay. I think our approach is to have bottom-up development as opposed to top-down development. Our approach is to decentralize as much as possible. And in Rajiv Gandhi's time, he time and time again emphasized the role of Panchayat Raj. He introduced Panchayat Raj. Mani Shankar Ayer worked very hard with him. Unfortunately, it didn't get translated all the way after we lost in 1989. And ultimately, India can really thrive only if we decentralize power. We believe that there is a structure there. We just have to implement properly. Maybe now is the time because we have technology, connectivity, networking to accomplish this. Earlier, it was not possible to standardize, coordinate, communicate properly. But if we make an attempt now, I think we'll succeed. I, I want to, in fact, read all this 18 uh, in three batches now. First, I want to read the six and ask some questions. So, we promise you freedom from fear is the first one. We promise to restore freedom of speech and expression, including full freedom of the media. We promise to decriminalize the offense of defamation and provide by law a speedy remedy by way of civil damages. We promise to end the arbitrary and indiscriminate suspension of the internet. We will review the Telecommunications Act 2023 and remove the provisions of the restrict freedom of speech and expression and that violate the right to privacy. We promise to review all laws that interfere with the right to privacy and make suitable amendments to various laws to uphold the right of privacy. So I think these are phenomenal, son. Many things may look obvious that like uh, we promise you freedom of fear, we promise you the full freedom of media, etc. But uh, still saying that obvious thing as a party's manifesto to the entire country, I think uh, uh, one of our alliance leader, uh, N.K. Stalin, uh, day before yesterday, uh, uh, has said in a public meeting in uh, Tirnal Valley, Tamil Nadu, when Rahul joined. So he mentioned that the entire hero of this uh, uh, election is the Congress manifesto. He being one of the senior foremost uh, political leader, he is saying this manifesto is uh, uh, the hero of this election. I think because of this, some of these things, saying the obvious things, reiterating, and I, you, you, the way it is reassuring to the citizens in the last mile, it's phenomenal. I want to hear your thoughts about why you guys thought, uh, are you guys crazy to think and put the, put this some of these obvious things? We promise you freedom of, uh, from fear, freedom of speech, freedom of the media. Because all of these things are under attack and people are not 
really conscious of the fact that these things are under attack. Some people are, but most people are not. Because most of the people are concerned about their jobs, inflation, and day-to-day -day hassle in their life. We need to connect those concerns to larger issues in the country, which are guaranteed in our constitution. People don't realize that we could not create jobs because we have fear because. And that's the reason we put all of these things. And I think 2024 is an important year for India's future. This election, like many of us have said, is going to decide the destiny of a nation. And as a result, all the key issues that face us are properly outlined in the document. Earlier manifesto didn't require focus on democracy because it was there and everybody understood it. You know, when um, Bajpai was prime minister, nobody questioned democracy. Nobody questioned the independence of institutions, it was assumed that everything is okay. You know, a little bit here and there. Similarly, in Mrs. Gandhi's time, emergency was declared and people questioned that. So, that's the kind of time we have today. Yeah, if we go by uh, MG Devasagayam, uh, it is uh, 100x of that uh, emergency times. In fact, uh, that. Uh, emergency time democracy still thrived and there was free and fair election conducted uh, after that uh, emergency but i think we this particular election nobody's believing that it's a free and fair election right yeah i am concerned i told you many times and i've gone public on it that my concern on evm uh, are aligned with uh, mr devashaham and his committee report which i've read and understood and believed in it and still believe in it and unless and until we sort out the EVM issue, I won't have confidence or trust. I've lost my trust in election commission. Now it is up to the Supreme Court to decide what is good for the people of India. I see a section on uh, judiciary and how you protect the institutions also. We'll get to that. I Absolutely. think it's phenomenal. See, one um, nice thing is in India, we have a lot of talented people. You know, we have a lot of committed people. India is full of capable, committed, but we lack courage at times. And if you give them a little bit of support, people will do their best. People will come from all walks of life to help. But you got to give them a chance. You got to listen to them. You got to open up. And that's the problem when authoritarian regime sets in. They close doors for conversation. They don't welcome new ideas. You know, I give this example to a few friends. Uh, we had a National Innovation Council under Dr. Manmohan Singh. And I firmly believe that Innovation Council was very important because it was at state level and district level and in uh, clusters and, um, you know, all kinds of uh, schools we were talking about, uh, Torford, Jor centers and all kinds of things were going on. And as soon as 2014 elections announced the victory of BJP and Modi government, Within 30 days, National Innovation Council was dismantled, which basically told me that, look, we don't want new ideas. We have our ideas. We know what needs to be done, which is fine from their perspective. But basically, you have shut doors for people to come forward with innovations. And a lot of these things look different from different angles. You know, 
Sounds good, sir. I want to read the second and third sections uh, together. So, uh, do we have questions or? Yeah, uh, there are questions, uh, but I want to kind of at least get you the uh, important perspectives from you. We have 322 viewers, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, that's good. But let them ask. You know, we sure, don't know sure. your stuff. But sure, sure. Correct. Sure. I to hear people, people, yeah, yeah. People have uh, said uh, your book is good. I think uh, I'll, I'll keep updating. Hi, How are you? They have received your book. Yes. And, uh, okay, let's go back to Sunil. Yeah. So I think he's saying good morning and he received and uh, he's very much fan of you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Sunil. Uh, yeah, I'll go as uh, we get to questions. I think everybody's wants to, wanting to hear your perspective. Mainly, I think everybody's wanting, uh, waiting. So I'll read the second, uh, second and third uh, stages. So we promise to uphold the people's right to assemble peacefully and to form associations. We promise not to interfere with personal charges of food and dress, to love and marry, and to travel and reside in any part of India. All laws and rules that interfere unreasonably with personal freedoms will be repealed. Yep. We promise that the two houses of parliament each meet for 100 days in a year, and the great traditions of parliament that prevailed in the past will be revived and unscrupulously unscrup observed. We Absolutely. promise that one day in a week will be devoted to discuss the agenda suggested by the opposition benches in each in uh, each block. Uh, and uh, we promise that the presiding officers of the two houses will be required to severe the connections with any political party, remain neutral and observe the age-old norm that the party that the speaker doesn't speak. We reject the one nation, one election idea and we promise that elections of, to the Lok Sabha and the state assemblies will be held as and when they are due in accordance with the constitution and the traditions of a parliamentary democracy. We promise to restore the voters' trust in the election process. We will amend the election laws to combine the efficiency of the electronic voting machine and the transparency of the ballot paper. Voting will be through the EVM, but the voter will be able to hold and deposit the EV, uh, machine generated voting slip into the voter verifiable paper audit trial unit. The electronic vote tally will be matched against the VVPAT slip tally. This we is the key. Yeah. This is the key even in 2024 election. If it is not done in 2024 election, I don't trust. Okay. So I think Supreme Court will have to really decide in the next few days, perhaps, whenever the next date is, uh, this particular issue. You know, I have said over and over again that I want that receipt in my hand. Don't show it to me and drop the way you want to drop, because when you drop, I don't know what you're dropping. You may be doing the right thing, but I don't know. If you want to make sure that what I have casted is what you are counting, give me the paper receipt. Let me put it in a box, which is not connected electronically, and count everything. Fine, so there'll be a little more hassle this time. Big deal, na? No, oh, this is phenomenal, Sam. I think uh, whatever uh, you said, you are trusting some bit of automation, but with uh, this uh, verification system, I think this is phenomenal to continue to see what was invented, but uh, with a uh, with manual verification aspect, which is phenomenal. If the uh, uh, Supreme Court is able to guide election commission on this. Any questions, uh, Sean? Okay, finish your reading and then we go to. Sure. Okay. No, we don't have a lot of questions, Sam. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, I'll, I'll just go for the next one. We promise to strengthen the autonomy of the Election Commission of India, the Central Information Commission, the Human Rights Commission, the Office of the Comptroller and Auditor General, the mm -hmm. Commissions of SCST, Minorities and OBC and other constitutional bodies. I think few of these are, I think, assuring the independence of these institutions are looking again obvious. But I think you are saying this to us. We assure those institutions who may be in fear now that okay, they are going to get back their independence so that they can act neutral, they can act with fairness, and they can take their decisions uh, uh, with respect to all their uh, societies they are serving. Good. Sure. We promise to amend the tenth of the schedule of the constitution and make defection, leaving the original party on which the M MP or MLA was elected an automatic disqualification of the membership in the assembly or parliament. I, I think, promise you this. I think yeah, they're very. 
the operation lotus will stop right after this <laughs> and we promise to restore the planning commission and define its roles and responsibilities that will include formulating medium and long term perspective plans to meet the needs of the now central economic policy described absolutely. in chapter 7 absolutely planning is always very important planning should not be seen as centralized activity only planning is planning and planning commission this brings this country has planning. gone through yeah our country has gone through with uh, multiple planning commissions do you want to talk about any of your past experiences sir oh i spent a lot of time in planning commission you know i had office uh, in planning commission for many years right next to montex office when montex was the deputy chairman of the planning commission and we had some very important members you know whether it was kasturi rangan or uh, saida hamid at one time in the early days in rajiv gandhi's time abid hussain and others and we all interacted on a regular basis had coffee together and they, that gave us personal interaction platform okay and planning commission is one place where chief ministers come regularly i remember once when uh, uh, modi as the chief minister of gujarat was going to come to planning commission uh, montek met me in the lobby and he said sam today uh, chief minister modi is coming will you join us i said okay so i went and joined in that meeting that wouldn't have been possible okay so i think planning commission has a major role to play and it is not the kind of planning commission that soviet union had it is the planning commission of today it is the planning commission that looks at data analyzes and in this day of ai as a tool planning commission will have much bigger role to play okay so i i i think planning commission is important you can't just dismantle it because you thought it is like soviet union planning commission planning commission has evolved yeah. awesome sir so i think uh, what is this now sangal economic policy there is a precursor in this uh, section talking about that economic policy what you have briefed in the next chapter 7 so is, is uh, w- w- what is the top important point uh, which you are uh, looking up to uh, the the now sangal economic policy what is now sangal now sangal economic policy i think uh, they they are talking i think they have given a name for this whole uh, thing briefed out in the uh, chapter 7 which is on the economy you know if simpler way to look at this is to say we want bottom up development we want decentralization in our economy we want to focus on small and medium scale industries local production local talent local capabilities and ability to solve local problem using local resources i mean to some extent this is gandhian approach to problem solving okay i don't need global expertise everywhere okay local people know what the real issues are local farmer knows lot more than we think so we got to give them important and not impose solutions on them so today system is we have the solution for your problem and we're going to tell you how to solve your problem as opposed to saying what do you think we should do to solve your problem how can we help you okay so that is the fundamental difference we are not going to set up huge plants but we are going to set up networking of smaller plants to scale okay. we're going to provide local jobs why should everything come from china today i mean i say this many times that even ganpati statue comes from china look at all the artisan we have in the country i mean indian art and craft industry has huge potential globally we haven't provided marketing support to them we haven't given them new tools and technology 
And that's the challenge in building new economy. That's what new economy is all about. It's not about export to various countries and it's not about uh, producing goods for Louis Vuitton and others. That's not what we are talking about. Yeah. Awesome, sir. I think uh, the rest of the section of uh, the defending the constitution and removing fear has also some few important assurances. We promise to ensure that the police investigation and intelligence agencies will function strictly in accordance with the law. They will be brought under the oversight of parliament or the state legislatures as the case may be. We promise to put an end to the weaponization of laws, arbitrary searches, seizures and attachments, arbitrary and indiscriminate arrests, third degree methods, prolonged custody, custodial deaths and bulldozer justice. Mm -hmm. This is phenomenal. So I think um, I, this, this, this goes by the meticulous standing of Congress with all those oppressed people for yeah. past 10 years. So I think, uh, uh, I, in fact, I don't know how many people felt. I, I also felt uh, very much uh, Gandhi when, when I read this, uh, the whole document. Because this is not uh, some some other uh, communist propaganda, right? So this is, as you correctly said, this is a real Gandhi, Gandhian yeah. values being reflected in each and every sentences. Yeah, but that's what Congress party is all about. That is the idea of India that Congress party had during independence, after independence, and even now. This is what the fight is all about. Today's fight is all about the idea of India. And I think that idea of India is pretty well articulated for implementation in that document. And it needs today a lot of work to bring things back to normal. I think uh, saying something is very easy, but uh, doing something is very tough. So yeah. maybe here you have been always saying that, OK, you, you want to protect the democracy, but now you are doing it. Actually, this is the very first step towards the doing, putting yeah. a blueprint, I think, which has already happened. So I see an, our next assurance. We promise to enact a law on bail that will incorporate the principle that bail is the rule, jail is the exception in all criminal laws. So I think even there are a couple of chief ministers who are put behind the bar. So I think, yeah. So you want to comment anything on that, Sam? Well, we know what is going on, whether it is chief ministers behind the bar or, you know, 24 cases on Rahul or day-to-day -day harassment, um, media coverage on Harold case. It just goes on and on. People know it. Okay. And those who suffer know it even more. Okay. The key is that the, this election is all about the idea of India that we are fighting for. I have said time and time again, it is not about BJP versus Congress or Alliance. It is not about Modi versus who. It is about the future of India. What kind of a nation you want to build? And that's where the India Alliance people have come together, saying this is the kind of India we want to build. Okay. Where there is no fear, where there is equality, where there is justice, liberty, institutions are independent. You know, and that's what we are talking about in the manifesto. We will introduce prison reform to transform jails into institutions of rehabilitation, reform and correction. And I, I see another important uh, section where uh, you have laid out uh, how you will reverse damage. Before that, uh, I think uh, I just want to talk about uh, this particular section itself, defending the constitution, which is 18 assurances, which is phenomenal. So reversing damages, uh, you have mentioned in the last 10 years, tremendous damage was done by BJP. NDA by misusing the brute majority enjoyed by parliament to make laws that violated the letter and spirit of the constitution of India as well as the fundamental principles of lawmaking, namely necessity, consultation, reasonableness, and proportionality. We promise that all anti-people laws passed by BJP NDA without proper parliamentary scrutiny and debate, especially those relating to workers, farmers, criminal justice, Environment and forest and the digital data protection will be thoroughly reviewed and changed. We will carry out complete investigations of the electoral bond scam, the reckless sale of public assets, 
the pm cash scam repeated intelligence failures at the highest levels and corruption in major defense states you want to touch upon anything on this reversing the damage why do you say you want to reverse damage and put a section and talk about it actually this is a this is an important issue it is important because bjp came to power with 40% of the vote 60% still remains with the opposition 40% vote does not allow you to really go make changes that affect 100% blindly without proper conversation debate discussion taking people into confidence so all that you have done needs to be put back on track i just have a comment from avi uh, dandia our friend ke aap hindi mein boliye yeah, go ahead okay so prayatna karenge avi uh, aapki baat sach hai ke hindi bolna zaruri hai to reach out to large number of people lekin ek aadat ho gayi hai buri aadat ho gayi hai shayad ke hindi mein bolna bhul jate hain और अच्छा बोल भी नहीं सकते क्योंकि हम यहां 60 साल से हैं हमारा विषय है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स फिजिक्स सो हम सोचते हैं इंग्लिश में तो हिंदी में बोलने के लिए हमें दिमाग में ट्रांसलेशन करना पड़ता है कठिन है हम माफी मांगते हैं आपसे लेकिन सच यह है कि हमारे लिए इंग्लिश में बोलना आसान है और हिंदी में बोलना थोड़ा कठिन है लेकिन प्रयत्न करेंगे अभी आपने हमें रिमाइंड किया बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सो हम यहां पे बात कर रहे हैं डेमोक्रेसी के बारे में शॉन ने मैनिफेस्टो में जो आइटम लिखी हैं वो अच्छी तरह से पढ़ी हमने बताया कि मैनिफेस्टो जो कांग्रेस पार्टी ने तैयार किया है वो हमारी दृष्टि से बहुत अच्छा एक पेपर है जिसमें बहुत सारे लोगों ने काम किया है उसमें विचार लिए गए हैं राहुल गांधी की दो यात्रा से जो राहुल ने सुना समझा सो हम सबसे पहले धन्यवाद देते हैं चिदंबरम जी को क्योंकि वो हेड थे कमेटी के और उनके साथियों सब लोग जयराम रमेश और सब अदर्स और हम ऑल्सो धन्यवाद देते हैं कांग्रेस के प्रेसिडेंट और राहुल गांधी को ये मैनिफेस्टो बनाने के लिए इस मैनिफेस्टो में दो चीजें हमारे तरह से इंपॉर्टेंट है एक है माइक्रो लेवल यानी ऊपर से ऑन द हाई ग्राउंड जिसमें बताया है कि पहला काम है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन को बचाना डेमोक्रेसी को ट्रैक पे लाना हमारी जो संस्थाएं हैं उनको आजादी देना मीडिया को फ्री करना और बहुत सारी चीजें जो बदली गई है आखिरी दस साल में उन्हें सुधारना उसके साथ साथ इकोनॉमी पर ध्यान देना जिससे नौकरियां क्रिएट की जाए दाम को कंट्रोल किया जाए और उसके लिए टॉप डाउन की वजह बॉटम अप डेवलपमेंट चाहिए 
डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन चाहिए अब देखिए मुझे डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन का हिंदी नहीं याद आ रहा आना चाहिए लेकिन नहीं याद आ रहा अभी दिमाग में सो माफ करना लेकिन ये सब चीजें जो प्लेटफॉर्म तैयार करती है भविष्य के लिए ये मैनिफेस्टो में बहुत अच्छी तरह से समझाई गई है और उसके बाद मैनिफेस्टो जो शुरू होता है पहले ही वो कहता है कि हमें सब लोगों को साथ ले जाके ये काम करना है हमें देखना है कि बिछड़े लोग गरीब लोग जो पीछे रह गए हैं उनको हाथ थामना है और उन्हें हमारे साथ ले जाना है उसके लिए जो भी करना पड़ेगा फॉर एक्विटी इंक्लूजन वो हम करेंगे फिर आता है हम जवान के लिए क्या करेंगे महिलाओं के लिए क्या करेंगे किसानों के लिए क्या करेंगे नौकरियों कैसे बढ़ाएंगे ये सब चीजें भी अच्छी तरह से आउटलाइन की है हमने बहुत मैनिफेस्टो देखे हैं लास्ट चालीस सालों में कांग्रेस के ऑपोजिशन के बीजेपी के और बहुत पार्टी के हम मानते हैं कि ये मैनिफेस्टो इज पर द बेस्ट आई हैव सीन सो फार आई एम प्राउड ऑफ द डॉक्यूमेंट हमें बहुत क्या है प्राउड का आई डोंट वॉन्ट यूज अ रॉन्ग वर्ड फ्यूचर बट दे डिट शो एनी ऑफ दैट and they just made me who are to who are back our right wing friends call you who are to who are uncle <laughs> that's their privilege i have no issue you know it's like the recent one they said i said something about uh, uh, increasing tax of the middle class to pay for all this i didn't say that this was something 5 years ago we had discussed but they show it as if it was done yesterday And it was also not on the full context, Sam. I think uh, you I spoke about middle middle class. I that I got a lot of people to call me saying, "Oh, you said this." I said, "I don't even know what you're talking about." Yeah. Then somebody sent me a clip, and I saw the clip, and I looked at the background, and I said, "Oh, this is my friend Dinesh Trivedi's house," yeah. and I haven't visited that house for more than five years. Okay, so I said, "This is a very old video," but they do this anyway. So. मैं आपसे माफी मांगता हूं कि कुछ ट्रांसलेशन अच्छा नहीं कर सका बट आप समझ लीजिए द स्पिरिट ऑफ इट है कि ये मैनिफेस्टो टाइमली है और ये मैनिफेस्टो जो हम इंप्लीमेंट कर सकेंगे और करेंगे तो देश की दिशा बदल जाएगी विश्वास रखिए कि अभी देश को ऐसे विचारों की जरूरत है अभी देश कठिनाइयों से गुजर रहा है बिकॉज ऑफ पोलराइज पॉलिटिक्स हमारे वहां झूठ फैलाया जाता है लोगों को बहकाया जाता है धर्म के नाम पे। So, ये सब बदलना है क्योंकि हमारे देश में डाइवर्सिटी इतनी ज्यादा है कि हमें पूरा ध्यान देना है कि ये देश सबके लिए है अभी आई होप दिस मच इन हिंदी इज गुड इनफ मे बी यू कैन गिव इट टू अवी टू एड फ्यू थिंग्स कैन यू गिव अवी ए चैनल टू एड अभी अच्छा ही वॉज देयर ओके कोर्ट साउंड्स कोर्ट 
ரெஸ்ட்ரிக்ஷன்ஸ் ரீஅூரன்ஸ்ரெஸ்ட்ரீஸ்ட்ரீஸ்ட்ரீஸ்ட்ரீஸ்ட்ரீஸ்ட்ரீஸ்ட்ரீஸ்ட்ரீஸ
Okay. We have seen the impact of controlled media on the mindset of the people. Because they think whatever media says is the real truth. Most of the people don't find time to search for their own truth. They take truth as delivered to them. Like the example I gave on my video, which was five years old, shown today, average person will think that this is Sam's response today. It's a lie. But by the time they find out it's a lie, they have formed their opinion. Because I have to defend their lie. And if you're going to lie, you might as well lie all the time. That's the problem. We have lost the character. We have lost values. And it's very hard to fight that kind of environment. Okay. Awesome, sir. That is phenomenal. And I uh, want to read the last one, which is uh, very important, uh, through which they are controlling, even uh, they have invested, uh, Prakash, uh, actor Prakash Raj has said, uh, they have invested uh, thousands of crores in the film industry to sure. make films, yeah. which is, yeah. which is tough. So Congress will amend the Cinematograph Act 1952 to provide that the Central Board of Film Certification grants graded certificates to accord, uh, uh, according to transparent and reasonable criteria. So. What were films which were having a dissent? Uh, uh, so they, they were controlling it and they were providing a lot of uh, uh, kind of harassments uh, not to provide CBFC certification for this past 10 years. Many films have gone through the trouble. And not only that, there are a lot of films uh, which is uh, was literally even rated as a propaganda movie um, mm -hmm. uh, by even uh, the reputed uh, film critics uh, from outside India, uh, like this Kashmir Files. So I think uh, want to hear your thought about this uh, the last one, the important ones on, on the media. Well, I I'm not big on films. I don't see films, so I'm probably the wrong guy to comment on movies. You know, I don't watch movies. Unfortunately, I wish I could. You know, um, I did watch a lot of movies. Use my quota when I was young. You know, and thereafter I hardly watch movies. You know, I want to watch, for example, uh, the What's your favorite movie. Yeah, um, Oscar winning movie I want to watch. I haven't had time. You know, I can't. What was your uh, What was your all-time favorite, uh, Sam, in uh, Hindi Hindi movies? Oh, I, in my generation, we loved Piasa, we loved Kagaj Ke Fool. You know, those were the movies because we were also young and in romance and you know, a little uh, sort of crazy. So we loved the romantic movies and songs and all that. You know. Uh, but after I came here in 1964, I haven't watched full Hindi movie. I have never seen any movie of Amitabh Bachchan, Sarukh Khan, or any of these guys. None whatsoever. Okay, my so wife would watch it, and I'll be just walking in and out doing my work, so I'll see their faces. But I've yet to watch a full movie. Okay, uh, I want to watch Oppenheimer. Okay. Yep, that's phenomenal. I want, watch, I want to watch that because you know I'm a student of physics and I studied about him when I was young uh, with great admiration. And uh, I hope I can learn something from that movie. You know? There is a Netflix documentary on Einstein where how he went out of Germany and uh, kind of came to US and stayed and uh, fought fascism. Einstein, I read, I read yeah. Einstein's biography. You know, by Isaac uh, Isaacson or whatever, uh, it's a good one. But Einstein, I know a little more. Like Gandhi, I have, those are my two heroes. Yeah, yeah. When I, I I know that they are your heroes. In fact, when I saw the documentary, I literally saw the way you are fighting to protect our democracy sitting in US. Almost, I saw the parallels. <laughs> but you know, there is a larger issue which is probably not germane to today's conversation. And that is not just democracy in India. What do we do with the conflicts that's going on in the world today? 
right now i'm very worried about iran invading israel if that happens something is going to happen because iran will not keep quiet it will get out of hand things will be really bad in middle east and if it is bad in middle east it will percolate down into other areas so i see the world at a very delicate stage today with war in ukraine war in gaza iran intervention soviet union all charged up us concern over china china's exercise in the eastern waters all of these are alarming signals for the world so einstein started an institution right after atom bomb was invented that institution was designed to really come up with a global agreement protocol a lot of people worked on it hundreds and thousands of scientists and all that that work over a period of time remain in the background there is a young man i came across from india very good uh, mr khan and he has educated me taught me a great deal about it i am looking at einstein's effort and i am also working with few other friends on how do we create global constitution so i spent almost 2 years on it now and i believe that is as important as what we are doing in india we need global constitution yeah. and that's going to be my next big project to keep me interested another uh, one important uh, parallel i saw between the times team hitler and uh, you uh, current uh, the prime minister uh, in india is uh, so you, you both are in physics and the continue fighting for democracy you are still in the board of uh, fermi institute uh, so uh, looking at a lot of energy things so do you want to talk about uh, what are you doing in fermi you oh i both thanks shan it may not be of interest to a lot of people okay uh, but i'm on the board of fermi where we work on neutrinos you know we have a budget of 6 billion dollars to detect neutrinos so fermi lab is close to my house about 15 miles in batavia so it has very interesting global board and we all meet once every 3 months uh, very capable people from university of chicago and others uh, department of energy funds it and we are producing neutrinos in batavia facility so there is an underground lab about a mile so you go in a lift about a mile and there is a big lab and then we are going to shoot those neutrinos to south dakota where we bought a mine gold mine old and spend about close to billion dollars in getting the rock out one mile down we have created four football field size space to build labs and it's a great global collaboration india is also participating in this india has contributed a great deal to instruments and indian scientists come here it's a fascinating project okay uh, hopefully in next 5 10 years will detect neutrinos for the first time and i am sure it will result in 3 4 nobel prizes okay then i run a food bank in india in 50 cities so if you go to india food bank network we feed hungry people every day in india 
I'm chancellor of a university in Bangalore for transdisciplinary medicine called Transdisciplinary University that my colleague Darshan Shankar and I started 30 years ago is non-profit. Then I run a fairly big NGO in Washington, D.C. called Global Knowledge Initiative where uh, um, we take our knowledge from U.S. to solve large global problems. Surprisingly enough, three months ago, some Chinese fellow who died left $3 million to our foundation just out of nowhere. We had met him once somewhere in a meeting. He was very impressed with what we are doing. So in his will, he left $3 million to this foundation, which I had started about 14 years ago, along with Nina Fedorov, who was science advisor to Hillary Clinton and Condoleezza Rice. So Nina is about my age. We started that. Um, and we already got $2 million out of his will. So things happen, you know. So I do lots of interesting things, keep me busy. And that's why life is interesting and exciting. There is no dull moment. Yeah, we took a good segue, but it's a very interesting to learn the very impactful work, what you are continue doing in science and technology and all other areas. Uh, science. Very yeah, I just got a new patent on January 10th. You said I got it. System. Yeah. I'm filing few patents on AI. So I keep myself busy, you know. So hopefully, I think India will get to use your uh, wisdom, Sam, again. Oh, I don't so, know about that. I don't know about that. I know what I have to do. You know, India is... There are millions and millions like me in India. Believe me, India is full of talent. I have great respect. I mean, when I came to Chicago, I met uh, Chandrasekhar, Dr. Chandrasekhar, who invented black hole. And I was young then, and he was a professor at University of Chicago. And I met him at some event. And I said, oh, my God, look at this physicist. This was 60 years ago. The man who invented black hole was Indian. You know, so I meet a lot of these people, you know. And Indians are great, great thinkers. And we have a good history of all this talent, you know. So I'm proud of our heritage. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I want to maybe end uh, today's call with uh, maybe reviewing the six other assurances on very important topics for the country, which is on judiciary. So maybe then we'll go for uh, next week, uh, anti-corruption and uh, art culture um, next week. But I judiciary, want, I want uh, to interact more, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather so, than you uh, and I all the yeah, time, sure. I would like people to interact and bring their views and because that's the idea. Correct. Now, today uh, we kind of have few questions, Sam, but not a uh, lot. And also people want us to read, um, uh, do a kind of uh, this no manifest problem. reading so that... No problem. People have not paid attention beyond that uh, equity, youth, women, farmers, workers, actually. That was the one which broadcasted very well. I think people never not paid attention to these some of the sections, uh -huh. which is the real diamond. So judiciary, uh -huh. I see this full face. Thanks to the misgovernance, weaponization of the laws, misuse of investigation, investigating agencies and abuse of executive powers by the BJP NDA government in the last 10 years, the people have come to look upon the judiciary as a law sedition against anti-democratic actions and authoritarianism. An independent judiciary alone can uphold the constitution of India. It's a very phenomenally written preface. What are your thoughts on this? This tells something, actually, even the current judiciary will certainly able to look upon this and uh, 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 able to read something between the lines. So what what, what this few lines are talking actually about the current state? No, people know that judiciary comes under pressure. People are aware of it. We have seen decisions in the past. And we want to make sure that judiciary is given the autonomy they deserve. Respect our justice system. But at the same time, I believe we need to improve productivity of our judiciary. If I had an option, I would focus on all the pending 
cases. That will give confidence and trust. We can't have 30, 40 million court cases pending in a country of this type at this stage in development. I firmly believe, and I don't have any statistics to prove, that if we reduce time to justice from 10 years or so to maybe 18 months, we'll add 1 or 2% to our GDP. I firmly believe. I don't know how to prove it. I have one case through a company I know where a friend of ours took a million dollars from us and never paid back. All the documents are there. Every legal paper is there. Case has been in court for 10 years. 10 years. It can be sorted out in 10 days if you want. Here are the documents. Here is the person. This is what he didn't do. Okay. And sort it out, my friend. But every time you ask for a new date, because somebody's brother-in-law is sick, somebody has a headache, lawyer is on vacation, okay, and it goes on and on and on for 10 years. Okay. Look at the cost of money for 10 years. Okay. I mean, what kind of justice is that? And I'm sure there are cases for more than 10, 20 years in India. So if we resolve that, I think it will be a great contribution, besides being independent and all that. Because we have all the tools today. We didn't have those tools in the past. So I can understand the manual system was not really equipped to handle so many cases. Today with AI, big data, and all of it is computerized. But we just don't want to change. It is all there. It's all computerized. We know exactly what to do. And in the process, we'll make some mistakes, which we do anyway, even in a manual system. So what are we worried about? You know, There are thousands and thousands of people in India under trial who are in prison. And they've served more time than they would be penalized for. They should be released because most of these are poor people. They don't have money for lawyers. Rich people have no problem. They'll just hire an expensive lawyer and they'll get him out. But what do poor people do? They are rotting in jail. So I think judiciary is a very important aspect of democracy. And it has to be fair. And it is not fair when you have 30 million, 40 million court cases pending in courts. Just not acceptable. I think uh, this primarily is pinning down to the uh, filling of vacancies in the judiciary. I think uh, you have touched upon multiple, uh, multiple issues, expanding courts, hiring more people. But most important thing is really using technology. Technology. And a mission, approach, and a mission approach to solve it. Mm -hmm. If Chief Justice decides tomorrow, says, I promise the country that we will reduce time to justice to 18 months in three years. There is going to be a national mission. Thousand young people will come and join. I know there are very good, capable young lawyers trained in computers, technology. You just put them on work for three years on an assignment. They don't need to be permanent. Saying, look, your job together with us is to solve this one problem. You got to have a mission. This cannot be done in the course of normal work. Because normal work is demanding. So you need a mission to clean up pending court cases. The backlogs. Hire 1,000 young people. Put some senior people on the board to guide them, monitor them nationally, and get it done. You know, I'll help. I know how to do this. We have done missions. Okay. And I'm also, sure other people will come and help. The justice denied is a very worst thing, right? I think a lot of people... Justice delayed is justice denied. Denied, yeah. So, 
Okay. We'll go to this important aspect, Assam. Um, the independence and quality of judiciary is reflected in the independence and quality of judges. Congress will unservingly uphold the independence of the judiciary in consultation with the Supreme Court and the Chief Justices of the High Courts. Congress will establish a National Judicial Commission. The composition of the new National Judicial Commission will be decided in consultation with the Supreme Court. The National Judicial Commission will be responsible for the selection and appointment of judges of the High Courts and Supreme Court. All vacancies in the High Courts and Supreme Court will be filled within three years. So this is phenomenal, Sam. This is uh, yeah, yeah. recruitment of judges. It's uh, you work in consultation. There is a little bit of fragmented process let where the government has to say. Very, let me tell you, we have some very intelligent people in judiciary. I have dealt with some. I had an opportunity to meet our present Chief Justice at his home, and these are highly qualified people, as good as anywhere else in the world. Okay. And they need to be given support, and we got to listen to them. Okay. Go ahead. Congress will amend the Constitution to create two divisions in the Supreme Court a Constitutional Court and a Court of Appeal. The Constitutional Court, consisting of the seven senior most judges, will hear and decide cases involving the interpretation of the Constitution and other cases of legal significance or national importance. The Court of Appeal will be the final Court of Appeal. That will sitting in benches of three judges each hear appeals from the High Court and National Tribunals. Phenomenal. So we will allocate sufficient funds for augmenting the physical and technical infrastructure of the judiciary and for the modernization and maintenance of the infrastructure, which you have touched upon already. More women and persons belonging to the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, and uh, other backward caste and minorities will be appointed as judges of the High Courts and the Supreme Court. The right. Diversity in the judiciary. What are your thoughts? Oh, we need that. We need diversity everywhere, not just judiciary. We need diversity in education. We need diversity in health. You know, look at our vice chancellors, teachers, scientists, engineers. Absolutely. Why do you think a Dalit judge or a women judge will be able to look at a problem very differently than a normal other judge? Because, because they have that uh, different viewpoints. Empathy. Empathy. They can empathize with the group in a very different way okay and i think it's important it's important to understand the i i give you one example which i may have given you earlier uh, i don't know whether i talked about it on this i had a very interesting professor from philadelphia come to visit me uh, he was a professor many yeah, times he, about the uh, caste name Right, right. Name. Exactly. Bhangya Bukhya is his name. Okay. Broken and hungry. Okay. Now, someone has to understand his feelings and his journey and his experiences to do real justice. Someone who hasn't gone through his journey would not be able to grasp the essence of his complain or you know reasoning or whatever and i think that's what people will bring to diversity i'll read out the last important assurance of the judiciary sam which i think uh, also there is a precedence uh, to this particular thing there was a uh, one important case where the entire country was watching uh, kind of uh, maybe a scandal involved with that and uh, so now i think you have mentioned about it in a, in a manifesto Congress will establish a judicial complaint commission consisting of retired judges of the Supreme Court and retired chief justices of the High Court to investigate complaints of misconduct against judges of the higher judiciary. So this is phenomenal. So I think uh, you are uh, certainly have looked upon other democracies and bringing this uh, yeah, yeah. New, new age of things. I think uh, which uh, is the important reform which is needed. What are your thoughts on this? I agree with this. And, you know, I think we need to also listen to professionals. I want more and more input from domain experts on everything. See, today we do not get proper input from domain experts. If it is water, it becomes a political decision. If it is energy, it becomes a political decision. We got telecom IT done in the way we got it done is because you had domain expertise and political will combine. Nobody understands this. We got Antarctic energy done 
स्पेस प्रोग्राम डन मिल्क रेवल्यूशन ग्रीन रेवल्यूशन बिकॉज देर वॉज डोमेन एक्सपर्ट एक्सपर्टीज अलाइन विद द पोलिटिकल विल सो एवरी वेयर वी नीड डोमेन एक्सपर्टीज we cannot reform judiciary if we don't have domain experts there but you need political will political will by itself doesn't do it if we say we will do this it doesn't get done we got to get domain experts everywhere i was just reading this morning an experience in belgium belgium as part of the eu has created a group of 60 domain experts on ai given them a time frame so many meetings invite all the domain experts and then come up with a policy on ai which will be debated discussed it is not a policy that will be prepared by politicians it will be a policy that will be prepared by domain experts and i think it is very important going forward in the democracy to increase participation of civil society and domain experts so far we have really limited the participation of civil society and domain experts more as a token politicians and bureaucrats and business decide you know business has financial interest bureaucracy has execution interest and political bosses have voting interest what you really need is civil society as active element people have talked about it but haven't done it and i hope we pay more attention to that okay let's yeah, uh, finish maybe up. i'll I, yeah i'll i'll maybe finish up uh, with 5 uh, minutes to few questions huh? Yeah. Anil Kumar Rathor humble request EVM and VV Pat pay emergency attention is needed otherwise uh, we will lose this whole battle for India uh, we empathize with you so i think uh, he's talking about EVM VV Pat case uh, coming up uh, John I will go back to it i agree with um, Anil Kumar Rathi um, but now it's out of our hand it is really in the hands of the supreme court and others to decide because there is very little time left okay, but i agree with you completely joseph brito i know him well the entire globe is in a volatile situation agree the lack of quality leadership is a major concern agree good leaders are thwarted agree and we have interesting right wing friends saying congress is muslim league as like uh, the leader uh, uh, narendra modi so and uh, she's <laughs> it's upset prime minister of a country to say this yeah. and get away with it yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. and get away with it okay and i i don't know which part of this uh, this 48 page document is supposedly i i don't know actually literally no, no, this no, is no, very no, much speaking no, gandhi no no you just yeah. say it you just say it without understanding without saying so, so he is feeding his own cult the bucks no it's not that it just say irresponsible things okay yeah. yeah and that's their game plan you can say anything yeah okay you can say oh congress didn't do this for 70 years blah 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 it doesn't have to be a fact yeah okay yeah, yeah thanks uh, thanks a lot sam and uh, i think we had a very good show so today we reviewed a uh, uh, very important sections uh, defending the constitution um, sixth chapter of the manifesto of congress Uh, saving democracy removing fear restoring freedom and uh, re- reversing the damage media judiciary all other three other sections had uh, respective other assurances let us look forward to review the rest of the con- uh, manifesto the blueprint for india by the india okay. alliance shall let me just take a minute to s- request lot of people out there in the field to form small groups at district levels in schools colleges chaurahas at work in family settings to really have a conversation on this manifesto every district should have at least 10 20 people who are discussing this manifesto spreading the word 
talking about what is good, what is that they would like to change, what they agree, what they don't agree. I think this manifesto should be used by a large number of people to really see in this manifesto their role, responsibility, their benefits, their task. Because in democracy, this manifesto belongs to everybody. You can add, subtract, agree, disagree. But that will happen only if you have conversation. So I encourage all Congress workers, all non-Congress workers also, students, women, farmers, to really take this manifesto seriously, discuss, debate, and see how at your level you will be able to implement and enhance. Okay? Thank so you, sir. Looking forward to talk to you in the next week. Uh, Priyamada and others, we will talk next week. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you.